I just came across this job where it came in for quote made out of structural tubing and we actually couldn't get the tubing because we're in the US and it was European spec. So we decided to make these parts out of solid and I thought it was a pretty cool part to show off. So here's a uh, run through of the print. Nothing extremely tight tolerance, a couple one thou tolerance fours, four thou concentricities. There's a two thou run out between both fours and the back face which is why you'll see me face the part off with a face mill instead of end milling the outside. This is the block of hot rolled A36, 3 by 4 by 2 and a half that we're using for these parts. And these are the fixtures that I designed on the computer. You got five pieces at once, five op ones, five op twos. This is the op one fixture. Two talons on each side, a pit bull on the opposite side holding the parts. This is the op two fixture. It's just some bosses milled into a 4140 pre-hard plate with some clocking pins in the screw holes. This is a closer look of the OP2 fixture. As you can see, the bosses are made about 5 tenths below the low limit of the bore, and there's the clocking pins. This is the main roughing tool I use. It's a Dormer 1 inch high feed mill, 5 inserts, 4 edges per insert, lasts about 200 minutes of cut time. This is that high feed mill running 800 surface footage, 26 thou per tooth, and three quarters of an inch step over with 30 thou depth of cuts just taking the mill scale off the outside of the parts. This is uh, very hard on the inserts in general. I normally run this with coolant, but just for filming I'm doing it dry. Next is roughing out the larger pocket on the side at 90 degrees. So the tool ramps down 30 thou at a time and then steps over 3 quarters of an inch. This is I believe 20 thou per tooth just to not influence the parts in the fixture and push them out of the clamps. This is doing the bores on the opposite side. Same speeds and feeds, same amount ramping, just going down and rough out the door. Finishing up the other side, now we're going to the faces. Same feed mill running the same speeds and feeds, just roughing the tops off. Now it's going to start doing the majority of the material removal, roughing out the entire center of the part. This is also running the same speeds and feeds, but a 32,000 step down instead of 30. It normally, again, runs with through coolant just to evacuate the chips, but for filming, I turned it off for this part. And just a quick look at the chips. They're not huge, but there's a lot of them, and they come off very fast, given the amount of material. This is just a quick look at what the parts look like after the feed mill has roughed them out and the tool inside of the milling chuck. Standard 20 thou finish cut. This is the same face mill that does the 90 and 270 degree faces just to hold that 2000s run out so there's no taper. You'll see in the next video that I actually lead off on a radius to not have a mark. And look how close the spindle nose gets to the top of the tombstone with this. So this is my helical 7 flute chip splitter I, know I use for roughing and finishing the outside and inside of the part. You'll notice my cut's really light here. And I actually had an issue with the parts moving in the fixture because after all the material is removed, you actually you lose quite a bit of clamping force. And you'll hear it, it sounds not very good even though it's going relatively light. This is just a normal 3 a 5 flute end mill T plus coated helical that's roughing out the side clearances with the areas that the high feed mill could not reach. Not running anything crazy for speeds and feeds here, but it's running fast enough. And it also finishes the walls of those same things and the 40 millimeter bores on the opposite side. Like I said, it's only a thousandths tolerance, so I do one finish cut and then I go back and do a one thou finish cut. Next is just putting those large 45 degree countersinks on the back side of the 5.5 millimeter holes. 
and just adding some little edge breaks around the outside of all of the features because chamfers make everything look nice, get rid of all the burrs. And I'm also actually deburring the backside with this small dovetail tool from Harvey. It even goes inside the M6 holes and deburs the backside to leave a chamfer there for when it taps it, there's no burr. And this is just roughing the extra material off on OP2 that was left over from holding on OP1. Same speeds and feeds as before. So I pretty much modeled and programmed this entire job in Fusion, just given how easy the modeling is and how simple these parts were to program. It was faster for me. As you see on the left side, it's the OP1 fixture. On the right side, it's the OP2 fixture. Pretty simple. When I first got this job, because it's an 1100 piece quantity, I didn't only want to do one piece at a time in a vise, so I figured I'd do five because that gives me enough time to amortize the tool changes out and decrease the effective cycle time of each part. As you see here, it's not a very complicated work holding. It's a pocket with two talons and a pit bull on each one on op one and three screws on op two. And as you can see as I rotate, it's the 3A16 thread size pit bulls and then two smaller talons on the right handed side. I just milled pockets for the stock about an eighth inch deep and that's how the parts are held on op one. For op two all you do is you install four M5 flathead screws and it holds the parts into the fixture. It locates on a boss on the fixtures I think the M5 screws are plenty for this job because there's not a whole lot of cutting force and I wasn't really worried about the parts moving. And as I remove the parts off OP2 here, you can see the four M5 holes. I don't usually model threads just because it makes the files run slower. But when you put the parts back on, you'll see that I actually mill the ledge with a 4,000th clearance here just as a safeguard so that if somehow the part did get twisted, it couldn't actually go out of tolerance because the tolerance on the thickness is plus or minus eight. As I jump here over into the manufacturer where I did all my tool paths, you'll see here's my first stop setup as I spin myself around. I put my work origin right in a hole that I milled into the fixture plate so that you can just pick up one point and that's your origin for all five. Now, as I go down here, you'll see all my programs for milling the actual fixtures, but the main program for actually making the op one of the parts is right here. You'll see here's my toolpath for the high feed milling. It's just a 2D contour down the side, always going the same direction because of the clearance. My 2D pocket to rough out the side, which I patterned all the way down. Another 2D contour for the opposite side to rough that off with the feed mill. A bore cycle for the bore, a facing cycle for the front. And you'll see here, right after it gets done with the facing passes on the front, it ramps out the center with the same tool. Now, I'm not making sharp corners on the inside just for tool engagement. And you can see there the ramping tool path. And as I open this, you'll see the speeds and feeds, 800 surface footage. And it's only taking a 32,000th depth of cut. As you see here, I'm leaving stock. I put the ramp angle at 10 degrees, which is a lot more than 32 thou, and I let the maximum ramping step down control that. Here's my finished cuts with my face mill, just one pass going down each face. And next I have my roughing for the outside, which I did on one part and then patterned down. You'll see the three quarter inch end mill, the three eighths inch end mill, which roughs out the side clearances. And here's my finished cuts. And then next is my finished pass on the 40 millimeter bore. Here I am spotting the 5.5 millimeter holes just for chamfers. Now I go to the other side and I spot those large 45 degree countersinks. And I also spot the M6 holes. Then I drill the 5.5 millimeter through holes and I drill my 5.5 millimeter holes with the same drill for my M6 tap. My chamfer mill just to add some edge breaks. Same thing on the opposite side, chamfer the 40 millimeter bores, chamfering the top of the parts. And after it gets done chamfering the top of the parts, it brings up the little Harvey dovetail cutter. And this is what I use for chamfering all the back sides of all my features, which are all patterned down also. Chamfering the M6 holes, chamfering the bores. You can see here it's a 210 thou diameter Harvey dovetail cutter. And I'm just using that just for a small 10 thou edge break on the back sides of all the parts. Tapping all the holes. 
And that's basically the OP1 program complete. And here you'll just see a quick cam simulation in Fusion if you were interested in looking at what the actual simulation looks like. I always leave mine in comparison mode, so red is basically the stock left to be removed and green is finished. You'll see all the operations here individually ran through rather fast. Now you'll notice that the boss on the one face where the larger bore is is actually still red. That's because that gets milled on op 2. You'll see when it gets to the end of the program, the whole outside of the part is actually not green. The part where the boss gets milled is still red. But you can go through and see everything's green other than that. I just wanted to show a quick close-up of what this little dovetail tool is actually doing. If you look, the tool is actually 210 thou diameter going through a 216 thou diameter hole. So it's very close. But if you look, it's actually milling a small 10 thousandths chamfer on the back side of all the M6 holes. And it's doing the same on these 40 millimeter bores. This is just to mitigate the amount of deburring that's having to be done offline. Just a small little 5 or 10 thou edge break on the back, just so the edge isn't sharp. Here you'll see OP2 using the same 1 inch feed mill to rough the tops off, rough all the material off the side, a finish cut and then milling the boss on the top of the parts and adding some nice little edge breaks. There's the 3 end mill, there's my chamfer mill, putting chamfers on all the parts, and that means complete parts off the machine, no burr. And here's like you saw in the beginning of the video, just roughing it down, 35,000 step downs, taking the extra material that I hold on to off and roughing off that boss for the end mill just so it only has to finish it. Finish cut with a face mill, finishing the boss on top, throwing some quick little 5 thou edge breaks everywhere just to make sure every single surface I can get to is chamfered, no hand deburring allowed. Thank you to anyone who took the time to watch this. I know this is my first video, so it's probably not perfect, but I got a lot of projects I do every week that I could start filming and showing on YouTube. So if anyone has any interest in this, like how I made this bill at Buffalo Bills sign, Throw a like on the bottom or a comment or send me a message. I'd love to keep doing stuff like this.